Hello everyone, and welcome to today's tutorial where I'll be showing how to make this curve rolling effect using geometry nodes. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let's start on a clean slate. This will be our base mesh. It is triangulated to get better edge paths. So, let's set up our curves based on the edge paths. So for that, oddly enough, we use the edge path node, the shortest edge paths node, and then we convert those edge paths into curves using the edge path to curves node, just like this. So we connect this into here and this into our geometry, but we need a start location. In this case, I will assign this vertice with a vertex group, and then we will access that vertex group using a named attribute node. So let's go and select our group and plug this into the end vertex. As we can see, we get all the edge paths, just like that, which is pretty nice. Let's go and put this over to here. Now, one of the issues is that we have too many uh, end points or start points in this case. So to reduce those, let's go and just have a random value node set to Boolean and reduce the amount until it looks good. That seems good enough for me. Let's go and put this into a frame and move it over to the side. That's pretty good, and I will label this Curves. There we go. Now, if we use a Trim Curve node just to see how it works, we'll see a little issue. That's because they all start out at these, what looks to us, as the end points, as we can see here. So we need to reverse this curve so that when we do roll them, they roll from the back point to all the other points. So. For that, we just use a simple reverse curve node, which is pretty good. So now is where things get complicated. So buckle up. We're, we will use a set position node, and that's the last geometry, geometry node that we will need. We're going to be taking the position and or the curve vectors, but that's that will come later, rotating them and then plugging them into that position output. So first of all, we need to go and get the vectors for all the points on this curve. And to do that, we need to compare, or subtract in this case, the position of one vertice, and then the position of the next one in line. So let's set that up very quickly. So position, and then we need to subtract from the position of the next point in the curve. So that is a little bit complicated, but we can do that. So if we use the offset, um, the offset point in curve node, just like this, we can get that. But we need to do a few things. So let's use an evaluate at index node so that we can get that position, but it's referencing the index of the next point in the line. So if we do that, that should work okay. But a little bug fix that we need to do is say, if it's at the end of the line, then switch back to just the normal index so that it doesn't freak out at the beginnings or the ends. So for that, we use the is valid offset and we put this into the switch node. We need to set this to an integer. Let's put this up here. So if there is a valid offset, we set that to true. And if not, we just revert back to the regular index, just like this. So now this part should be working. So that gives us the next point position. Apologies for my misspelling. There we go. And then this will give us the curve vector. So now that we have all these curve vectors, we now need to reassemble them. And I should probably label this as well. Curve, sorry, curve vectors. There we go. So now to reassemble these curve vectors, we need to use an accumulate field node. This basically stacks up the vectors or whatever you put into here according to the group index. So at the beginning, it'll be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as you go along the line. So we can plug this in here, but we need to set the group ID for every single spline. So to do that, it's fairly simple. We just use the index node and then evaluate this on a domain. In this case, we want the spline domain. So if we do that, that should work. So now, if we go and plug in the leading into the position output, we can see that it is currently broken. 
let's go and see why that is happening. Let's see. Ah, right. We need to actually offset the offset by negative one in this case. I think that works quite well. So there we go. Let's put that there. That is working. So this part is working. Let me label this as assemble curve vectors. Curve vectors. And there we have it. Let's move it over to the side. And now that we have all these vectors, we can rotate them. So to do that, well, actually, one thing we need to do first. All these locations are starting out from 0, 0. So we just need to add the curve start position. Fortunately, there is the curve root node, which is in the here thing. So curve read curve root. This is this comes pre-installed into Blender, but it is a node group, which can lead to very interesting finds if you go and look through there. So let's go and add that into there. And now if we hook this up, we should see that it now works almost perfectly. Let's put this into a frame and let's label this add start position. There we go. That's doing pretty well. So now let's rotate these vectors. So if we just use a rotate vector node or vector rotate node as it is called, we can see that they're rotating, but they're not rotating correctly. It's usually implied that when you rotate one, the points next in line will inherit that rotation. But unfortunately, we need to implement that. So fortunately for us, we can use the same node setup that we have here, switch it to float, and label this assemble curve rotations. Let me make that plural. So now if we plug the leading into here, we will see now that the rotations are stacking. But we can see just another little problem appearing. And that's that all of these are rotating on the z-axis. Well, we need to make it so that they're rotating on the normal of the object. So to do that, we simply need to store the normal. In this case, I will store it before the curves. That's very important. Let's set this to vector. Let's have this be the normal. And let's label this normal, just so that we can reference it later. Let's go and also put that into a frame. And now that we have this, we can go and plug this into the normal and plug that into the axis. Now we can see that this is working. Uh, it's a little chaotic but let's make it a little less chaotic in just a second. So to do that, let's go and get the spline parameter right here. And here I'm going to use an add node and I, I will clamp it, and then plug this into the assemble curve vectors. So now we can see that we already have it kind of working, but we can see there's just a little problem right now. And that's that these are rotating in the wrong axis. So they're rotating sideways instead of vertically, relatively, relative to the normal. Fortunately for us, there is a very easy bug fix for that, just one node. So let's use a vector math node, and we set this to cross product. This will effectively rotate the normal by 90 degrees. So there we go, we can see that is now working. Very nice. So let me go and Put this into a frame and label it uh, rotation axis. Very nice. Go and put that there. So now we can go and play around with this and customize it. So here we can see that these are just rotating, which is fine. But what if we want to make the rotation amount bigger or larger, the kind of radius? In this case, we can use a multiply node to go and make it larger or smaller, just like that. Tighten up the curve amounts that this controls the well it looks like we have a little issue ah that's why you need to make sure that this is a positive or else it will start caving in on itself which maybe you want okay now if we were to go and use the curve factor we can see that we get another very interesting effect right here which maybe you want that's another customizable trait but in this case i will keep this as the length and another thing that I should mention, if you use a clamp and then multiply this, you can also change the effective uh, kind of interpolation between no rotation and then the rotation amount you set right here. That is optional. In this case, 
I don't think it's needed, but it's good for me to show that. So let me go and put this into a, another frame right here. This is just a uh, rotation amount. Amount, just like that. And there you go. You now have a, the curve rolling effect inside a blender, and you can apply this on any object. So I can go and demonstrate this with an icosphere. Let's make an icosphere with a fair amount of polygons. Let's go and assign a rotation point. There we go. Now we can see, as we scroll along, this is working. It's actually a little too low subdivision, so let me subdivide it again. So lots of cool things can be made with this effect. Let me go and delete that. What else should I show off? To animate this, you know, you simply go and put in a keyframe at the animation end, and then the animation, be well, beginning then end. There we go. Put another keyframe, and now we should see that it is now rotating into place. So that is the tutorial. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out my Gumroad page and my Blender Market page. I have many fun demos and products up there for you to see, download, or purchase. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe if you liked it, and I will see you next time. Oh, and let me show off the entire node tree so that you can see it. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.